This guitar auction nearly broke the internet for enthusiasts of vintage Les Pauls. Let's talk about this. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this thing. This was a guitar that was listed on an auction site called High Bid. Now, I've never personally used this site before. I've heard of it. I don't fully understand what it is, but it's where people can advertise their own auctions. Sometimes it's like professional auction houses that also list on this. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can buy. It's kind of like eBay, but in just a live auction setting. I don't believe they have buy it now prices. You can find things from aircraft all the way down to computers and furniture and of course guitars. So naturally, when this thing showed up, it was posted on every single guitar forum, every single Facebook group page, people saying, hey, I can get this for about a thousand bucks by me. Is it real? Is it fake? There were so many people just unsure about this thing. So I wanted to give you my take on what this rare legendary instrument is. Okay, so first off, this was Lot 26, just simply labeled Les Paul Electric Guitar Appears to Be Old Less. Okay, that doesn't really give us too much to go off of. So at first glance here, Okay, just some weird Les Paul that appears to have been refinished like a brownish tobacco color. Like, it's not the best looking guitar in the world. But if we zoom in here, it appears that the toggle switch is just completely missing. It's either that or it's the photo angle. So that means this will likely need some maintenance to even be up to par to function. But we've got two humbuckers here. A historic styled ABR1 bridge. That is big in helping us identify this. Another feature that you can look at here is actually the nylon saddles. That is a late 60s spec. So that tells us this likely isn't something modern unless it was some sort of a reissue, but why would a modern day reissue when people know how much Les Pauls are worth end up looking like this? So our options are 50s, 60s, maybe an 80s prehistoric or a modern day guitar. But then we look down here, we have these golden bonnet reflector knobs. Okay, interesting. Not much more we can say just from this photo. Then we move on to just looking at the inlays. Okay, those have a very vintage look to them. Got a lot of light reflections in them. They're also very sharp on the corners. So that tells us a little bit about its age. But then it's this photo right here. This is why so many people were asking, is this real? Is it fake? What is this thing? Because that is not a Gibson headstock I'm familiar with on a Les Paul. I mean, it says Les Paul on there. It's got a crown. It's got the Gibson logo. It's got that going for it. The tuners are a little bit wonky. This must be fake. Someone on the forums tell me. <laughs> This told me everything I needed to know. This is a very, very, very rare 1968 Gibson Les Paul standard. When they first brought these things back, they had the crown emblem. And the whole reason why this actually has a crown on the headstock was not because Gibson was attempting to do something new when they brought the Les Paul back in 68. It's simply because of a typo. You can actually watch this video right here where I documented a 1968 reissue for the 50th anniversary that was done in 2018. This was a fantastic guitar. I fell in love with it, but I love the story behind this one. So definitely check out that full review and demo if you want to learn more. So everything here was 100% legit in my eyes. Unfortunately, this thing has been modified. It looks like somebody put Schaller tuners on here very recently after production. I mean, say this is a late 67, early 68. It would have originally had Klusen tuners on it, but these style of tuners, you generally find them in the early 70s. So it's probably around 72 when these things were put on or is put on later in life and these were just old tuners. It's hard to say, but these are early 70s tuners. I can't tell you that much. And the serial number definitely appears to be correct for this age range, 970992. It hasn't been modified, refinished on the back or anything like that. And we can see right here, there is no volute. So that also puts us within the 68 territory. And just the way that this whole headstock looks definitely puts it in the 60s or potentially 50s. But we, we, we know what it is at this point, especially by looking at the Gibson logo right here. And if you need further proof of what this is, take a look at that case. Yeah, that yellow lined interior is indicative of a late 60s Gibson. 
Now, occasionally you can find that on like modern day reissues. There were a few 70s interiors that also used that, but generally I think the late 60s. But you might be saying, hey, Trogly, I thought these had P90 pickups. <laughs> What's going on there? And my answer to that is, hey, you remember the top? This originally started life as a gold top with P90 pickups, 100% guaranteed. Somebody has just unfortunately routed it out for humbuckers. That was the other thing that kind of confused some people looking at this thing. But, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the first time I've seen this photo. I've never seen that, okay. Yeah, it looks like a rat chewed that thing up. Oh, that is a shame. But here we can see the original gold top finish. We've got the long neck tenon, which would also completely rule out 80s prehistoric reissues. But oh man, that original gold top finish in there with the smiley, I love that. Because these holes right here, what makes that whole smiley face is the screws from the P90 pickups. That's where it secures to. So somebody chiseled that away to make the humbuckers fit. They did an okay job right here. They at least put the wooden dowels in to re-secure them. But uh, they didn't have the right equipment for that job right here. However, it appears around the same time that they did the tuners, they did the pickups. Those are patent number T-tops. This could range anywhere from the late 60s until about 1974-ish. So I guess it's possible the dealer could have done that, but judging by that, I don't think <laughs> a dealer did that stock from the factory. But looking in here, okay, it just looks like we have some weird toggle switch on it. It is there. I doubt it would actually function like that. You might have to raise that up. Pro tip, if you ever have a toggle switch and you push it down and it automatically flips back into the middle position, normally it's because the cap is screwed on too tight or it's just too long. You need to file it down or just raise it up a little bit and then that cures that problem. That might help you one day instead of thinking that the toggle switch is broken. <laughs> Besides the ugly refinish and it being chiseled out for humbuckers, the neck is intact, and that's really, really important. This is an insanely rare guitar. I mean, we're talking, if I remember the lore correctly, less than 100. And I personally have not seen one of these things show up in original condition before. In fact, this is the first vintage original one that I've actually seen ever show up on the market since I've been looking for one. The reissues normally sell around 5,000 or so, and just the regular ones that didn't get the crown on them, they sell for big money. I mean, 68 Les Pauls are great. The cleaner they are, the better. And this particular example right here is extra clean. I mean, that's looking good. This is what the other one would have originally looked like. And even though it had replaced tuners, it still sold in the ballpark of nearly $20,000. So what do I think one with a crown is worth? In my opinion, granted, this is just what I'm personally thinking. I, again, I've never seen one of these things actually show up. I think it could fetch 40 to 50,000 because it's just that cool, at least to me. I wouldn't have any qualms spending 20 to $30,000 for one of these things. So you're probably wondering what this one sold for in this condition in an open auction. Ah, this one hurts. Only $6,100. And I truly think that's just because people were confused about what it was. Unfortunately, I missed this auction. Like, I forgot that it was even happening. I think I checked back on the 29th and was heartbroken. Because this had reached like five or $6,000 with like a day or two left to go. And I was totally expecting this to actually fetch about 12000 So the fact that it only hit six... Somebody got a great deal. Like, that is worth restoring, in my opinion. If I would have been the lucky one to have won this auction, I probably would have sent it down either to the Gibson Restoration Team or maybe Historic Makeovers. And I would have had them restore the original gold top finish and maybe do, like, a light aging job. Like, nothing over the top. I'm just talking, like, slightly aged the finish so it looks kind of cool. Because you're not really missing out on anything with this weird, ugly brown finish. It wasn't a exceptionally flame top by any means. Refinishing it and restoring it definitely would have been the right decision. And at the same time, restore the original P90 pickups. Now, I probably would have left it as a top refin because that's what this looks like to me. The rest of the guitar really is not in that bad of shape. Man, recording this episode, I'm kicking myself so hard not seeing this because this was literally like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get this particular guitar for not a lot of money. 
So even if you had to spend, you know, like $3,000 to get this back to where it should be, and that's like paying a lot, a lot of money to make sure it's right, you'd still be under 10 grand. Sure, it'd be a top refin, but <sighs> that was just such a deal of a lifetime. So whoever got that, congratulations. That is a 1968 Les Paul Standard. Well, for us to not feel so bad, there is a 20% buyer's premium on top of that. So they really paid like, what, about 7,500 bucks. So with the restoration work, you're still about at 10 grand. That would have been worth it to me. Man, I'm so sad. I would have kept that guitar too. I would love to know the full story behind this thing and how it ended up at this auction. But since I think we've got some time left today, I guess this is something we should maybe check out. Maybe not. Let's find out what kind of guitars we got going on. Okay, so it looks like we got a brand new Spark amp, some toys, some other entry-level guitars, which are actually pretty good, usually. <laughs> some Guitar Hero stuff. It doesn't seem like they get good stuff for the most part. Like, here's a Yamaha acoustic guitar for seven bucks. I guess that's technically a classical guitar. Some of those Yamahas are actually really good. Yeah, I'm not seeing much of anything. Maybe it's just because it's located in a weird spot and if you're in California, you'll find all the good stuff. So that truly was seeming like a once in a lifetime opportunity. It just happened to hit up on this website and you'll never see a deal like that again on a real 68. That is definitely a guitar that needs to be in my future museum because quirky specs, that's what I like. And when it comes to 60s Les Pauls, A, you don't have a lot of options, and B, a weird limited edition of a typo error type thing. Yeah, that's right up my wheelhouse. Okay, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.